straight back. Mm-hmm. On the left. We're mm-hmm. climbing up. Oh yeah, dude, that's freaking steep. That's steep and looks loose. On the right. Yeah, I see it. There are no crevasses though. They get cold. How are your hands? Look at my nip. I can see that. Yeah. Do you have anything else to say to the YouTube audience? Um, let's go. There's our route. What are our initial impressions? It's big. It's big. Good. It looks steep and loaded, which makes me nervous. Did you have just cool brightness? Yeah. Chugging, he says. Getting about a thousand feet since the truck. We're uh, going slowly but surely. Not sure how far we'll make it tonight. How are we doing? Setting up camp in frigid temperatures for a spring day. Walking. Let's go keep walking. Where are we going? Oh. Okay. Feels good. Screaming Barfies are over. Screaming Barfies long gone. Now he's got a little ways to navigate and a couple victims, if you see that. <laughs> All right, almost to the top of uh, this Roman head wall, I think. Roman wall. No one's there. Lock a little bit. Doing good. We started so late this morning. 8 a.m. And we got a, 
best to move to make it to the top by noon. We only got 30 minutes of about 800 feet plus the plateau of traverse. So, we're gonna make it happen. Got a wife and a baby to get home to. All right, against all odds, we survived a ski descent that was way beyond our skill level, or mine at least. Coleman Headwall descent, and we absolutely shredded it. Like, uh, people were gonna be looking at those lines for weeks. No his words, not mine, but they will be envious. to the trailhead. Feels pretty dang good. Be back here. Got a 1.2 mile ski to the truck. Pretty worked. Mount Baker Coleman Headwall. Uh, this will be a brief summary of Noah and I's uh, climb of the standard route on Mount Baker in our descent via the Coleman Headwall skis. Um, which was quite exciting. We uh, left Kashmir after work. Noah drove over from Spokane, met me at like 2.30 or 3-ish at my house. We left and headed up towards Mount Baker. Traffic in Monroe was terrible uh, as usual, so we didn't get to the trailhead till about 7.30. Uh, and we actually had to park about 1.2 miles from the trailhead. The road's still snow covered. Um, and we made it quite a ways up through the snow, but eventually it was just too slushy with ice underneath. Couldn't get any further. So we uh, got our stuff and walked up to the trailhead and probably got to the trailhead about uh, 8.30ish. Just at sunset, turned the headlamps on, started up the trail, a uh, certain Heliotrope Ridge trailhead. Um, up through the forest, the boot pack was great, so we made quick work. Um, just walking up the trail, once we got above the tree line here, you get onto that kind of hog's back ridge, I think they call it. Um, and we switched to skis and skins somewhere 
around there um, and it started getting very cold once we got above the tree line uh, and the wind was really picking up. Uh, we passed somebody in a, a black diamond pyramid tent somewhere up here that was just getting ready to go to sleep um, at 10 o'clock or maybe 9 o'clock. Um, kept going up until we got to uh, this spot which I think they call like the Gargoyle Rocks campsites. I will switch to uh, topo view here so you can see what elevation that was at. Um, looks like around 6,300 feet. Um, and we searched around for at least a half an hour trying to find a spot, probably 45 minutes, and couldn't find anything sheltered. We tried digging out a little cave and it just wasn't happening. Uh, couldn't get a flat spot so we went down to a spot that was indeed flat but very exposed to the wind in the cold. Um, I made the genius decision to not bring a tent on this climb. We've been very lucky with weather on our last few winter trips um, and not needed one. And so I decided not to bring one and that really bit me. Uh, we, I just brought a Tyvek sheet, laid it out on the ground and we slept on top of that and it was cold. Uh, definitely single digits if not zero or below. Um, no, I didn't have adequate sleeping pads so we basically just shivered all night. Uh, and didn't get going till about 8 a.m. Uh, I woke up at probably 6 to boil water. Uh, studied the face, decided it was a no-go. I was really nervous about wind slabs um, up above the face um, just because of the wind overnight blowing snow around and then how cold it was, things were kind of solidifying. Um, and that face is very steep, especially when you look at it um, straight on, it looks very steep um, and super avalanche prone, honestly. The crevasses were all filled in, but we decided not to climb it uh, and just take the standard route. So that's what we did. Um, some people had left before us that were camped at Gargoyle Rocks and the people in the pyramid below, I believe as well. So we just followed their skin track up the standard route, um, which was uneventful. Fine, we made great progress. Uh, we're a little over a thousand feet an hour. So we got to this ridge uh, where we had to switch to crampons and the wind really hit as you can probably see from the video. Um, it was freezing. Noah didn't have enough layers so we just had to keep moving to stay warm. Um, and we boot packed it up uh, past a few groups and there were still a couple ahead of us I think at this point. Until we got up to the plateau, switched to skins, um, skin across to the true summit and it was like jet engine wind uh, absolutely howling. So we took a few videos, a few pictures, um, and then started the descent. Uh, about here, I decided that we were going to ski the head wall. Um, I'd seen a couple of YouTube videos of people doing it, so I knew it was possible. Um, and the snow conditions were a lot more solid than I was expecting up high, um, which made me think the avalanche risk, at least from the top, was a lot lower. So we went for it. Noah is a much better skier, so I let him go first. Uh, he blazed the way and it was great skiing super super steep but about a foot of powder um, just enough to kind of cushion you uh, making jump turns on the way down um, the initial part was scary it was at least 70 degrees by far the steepest slope I've ever tried to ski um, and so we had to kind of traverse back over to the right um, through some terrain that was somewhat avalanche prone it was just loose on top of a solid layer um, and I was scared, so we went very carefully, very carefully, very slowly um, over to the right until we got into a little bit less angled terrain. You can kind of see here on the topo, it um, flattens out to maybe 45, uh, eh, probably 50 degrees. I don't know if it was ever at 45, but um, continue to ski down. I was following Noah. We went uh, uh, left here to avoid some ice cliffs down low that we saw. Um, we had a picture from the bottom of the route, so we knew to avoid those. Got way left below this Roman nose ridge um, and then continued left um, pretty far to avoid the only crevasse which was the berg trend at the bottom of the route um, and we easily jumped it right here it was like a foot maybe um, and then onto the glacier uh, all in all this took probably 30 minutes to ski the face I think it's like well it's here 8,000 so it's 2,000 feet um, at least if not probably more 2,500 feet at least um, and it's fast because it's so steep and direct. Uh, all trails bugged out right here and stopped recording my route. I have no idea why, uh, but this was an easy ski down the gentle Coleman Glacier. And then all trails restarted randomly right here, I guess. Um, and then we continued down to camp, uh, collected all our stuff that we had stashed um, below Gargoyle Rocks, and then uh, 
ski down to the trail. The snow is much firmer here. Uh, and my quads were absolutely destroyed, so Noah cruised way ahead of me. Um, and then I, we skied down the trail, basically just following the trail on the way back down, as you can see. Um, and then I walked probably the last mile to the trailhead and then skied down the road to the truck. And I got back there like 4.30 p.m. on Saturday, maybe. Um, you can see my stats on all trails, so definitely check me out there. It's just Eli Phillips, or I might be EEE Lip. I can't remember. But either way, you can find the trip report and GPX track, um, which is definitely the path of least resistance down Coleman Head while we avoided all the technical sections. So if you're just trying to do it, uh, definitely check that out. You can see our stats is a little over 8K elevation. It probably would have been 17 or 18 miles if all trails wouldn't have bugged out right here. Um, and then I've got a trip report, as always, that I typed up here um, on the, under the activity. So uh, I'll talk gear for a moment, um, although I did not take anything noteworthy on this trip, really. You can see our total weight is 42 pounds. Um, I'm including all the group gear now in all of these packs just so I can really evaluate um, where we're at. And it's more effective to try to save weight if I've got everything in here. So. Our packs were really probably closer to this 30 pounds because we split a lot of stuff. And then like it says here, six and a half pounds of worn weight. So our packs are probably 30 pounds. Um, same clothes as I usually take. I did take uh, some down mitts, which was awesome. I will be doing that every time from now on. It's worth 10 ounces to have warm hands whenever you need them. Uh, as I said, not taking a tent, never will do that again in the winter or early spring. Tyvek ground sheets, probably great for summer, but there's no reason for me not to take the Hyperlite Pyramid because it weighs like literally one more pound than this. Uh, MSR Reactor did okay. I, I'm i going to start doing the hot water bath method for the isobutane canister, so I had to keep it warm with my hands in the morning for like two hours, just my bare hands on the freezing canister, which is quite uncomfortable, and I don't want to do that anymore, so... Uh, gonna try the hot water bath. Other than that, uh, we took quite a bit of pro, didn't end up using any of it since we took the standard route up. Uh, I took the goalie um, ice tools, which would have been perfectly fine for climbing this face if we were gonna climb it. Um, totally capable. Uh, oh, and then I got this little mattress pump. It's only 2.1 ounces. Apparently, when you breathe into your mattress, it creates condensation, which can A, cause mold in the mattress and B, it'll freeze if it's that cold at night and make you colder. So they said use these little battery powered pumps. I'm gonna try it and uh, see how I like it or if it makes a noticeable difference. Um, that's about it for gear. To summarize the route, I would say uh, it's super steep. It was way beyond my uh, skiing comfort zone. Um, and this is, this is a very avalanche prone route. You gotta hit it in the right conditions, um, which I think we did to a pretty good extent um, but you gotta evaluate the forecast avalanche forecast carefully and then check the conditions on your way up because if this thing goes there's nowhere to hide you're gonna get swept away and no one's gonna find you so know what you're doing before you leave um, be cautious and uh, if in doubt just climb the north ridge or do something more safe <laughs> uh, thanks everyone for watching uh, and yeah check out my all trails trip report